Today on Stamp TV, I'm going to show you a couple of fun ways to accent the beautiful butterfly from the new Days of Summer Stamp TV kit. Let me show you the tools and products you need to do these techniques. First, you're going to need a Versamark pad. And when I'm working with different color embossing powders, I usually have a fairly clean pad that I use for white or for clear and then I save my dirtier Versamark pads for when I'm using gold, silver, or black. This way, none of the dirt will show through, and sometimes the Versamark pads get dirty because some of the ink that's left over on your stamps can transfer onto the pad. You're also going to need um, an anti-static pad. This is the Embossing Magic Pad, and this removes static from the surface of your cardstock, and it also removes oils that could possibly be on your skin and transfer onto the cardstock. This keeps your embossing powder sticking only where you want it. And speaking of embossing powder, today I'm going to use the Stampendous Fine Detail White Powder. Now usually when we talk about a technique like this, and I'm going to be doing some bleaching, and for those of you who have seen my bleaching techniques, you know that we generally pick a mid-toned colored cardstock and we mix that with black embossing powder and then bleach on top. But today we're going to use white embossing powder and I'm going to show you how stunning that looks. And here I have a little bowl of some household bleach. I have Clorox. You can use any bleach. But I will tell you that the newer your bleach is, the better it's going to work. If you have bleach that's been sitting around for a year or two, it may not work as well. I'm also going to use for one of the techniques a memento marker, and this is the nautical blue. And then I have a little spray bottle here with some water in it, and that's just to slightly dampen a piece of paper towel for cleanup, and I'll show you that in just a minute. For applying the bleach, I'm going to use a Niji water brush. And I have two Niji water brushes in my collection. I have one for water color applications, and then I have one specifically for bleach. Although you can wash the Niji water brush with soap and warm water, and you can use it for both, it is a little bit convenient to have one full of water ready to go and one dry ready for bleach. The stamp I'm going to use is this beautiful butterfly stamp that comes in the new Days of Summer Stamp TV kit, and this is from the stamp set A Wish For You. To begin, I'm going to start with the piece of black cardstock, and I also have some of our blue raspberry cardstock that I'm going to work on in just a minute. But I'm going to start with this one, and I'm going to rub that embossing magic pad all over the surface of it so I can stamp the butterflies on here. I also have a little folded piece of cardstock here for my embossing powder. I'm just going to put that off to the side for a second. So I'm going to ink up this butterfly and I'm going to stamp it going in all different directions. I'm going to start in the middle with the full butterfly so I have one full one and then I'm going to stamp them in different directions, kind of going off of that little strip of cardstock. Like that. And I know that's hard for you to see, but you might be able to see a little bit that watermark that it leaves behind. We'll do one going this way. And then we'll have one coming down from this direction. Okay. Now I'm going to put that away for, for now. And then I'm going to grab that embossing powder and sprinkle that on top of this strip of cardstock. If you have any that's stuck anywhere, you can get that off before you emboss. Some people like to use a little paintbrush, just a dry paintbrush, and just dust it off. I'm using my nail since I don't have a paintbrush handy. Okay, so there are my butterflies. <sighs> Blow away any excess. <sighs> there we go. 
Okay, and that's ready to emboss, but I do want to get this powder out of the way so I don't heat set that as well. And then I'm going to use my Marvi heat tool and emboss this. Now the white is very easy to see when it's done because as it becomes embossed, it gets much brighter white. And you can probably see that happening right before your eyes there. I'm going to turn it. Quarter turn. I'll do down here. that this area up top is cool. One little trick for embossing is to use a clothespin to hold your piece of cardstock. I've done that as well, but none of those tools seem to be with me today, so I have to do it the old-fashioned way. Okay, so now we have that pretty strip of butterflies, and we're ready to color them in with some bleach. Now, I'm going to color them just by, I'm not going to fill the tube up with bleach. I really don't like to do that. I don't, because again, bleach can get old over time and it will break down your plastics and your metals and things. So when you're doing this technique, don't worry about the barrel, just use it as a handle and dip the tip of the brush right into a little cup of bleach. So this is very easy to do. You do want to make sure that you stay within the lines though because anywhere that you touch this cardstock with the bleach it is going to bleach up. You can see every piece of cardstock that you bleach is going to come up a little bit differently. It all depends on how highly pigmented the dye is. Now let's hit that with a little bit of heat here. I like to turn it over too and heat it from the other side a little bit and that helps the color start to come up. Can you see it's coming up a little bit brown? getting lighter and it's kind of fun because you never really know what color you're going to get out of that see that beautiful brown in there all those little brown tones and if there are areas that you missed you're going to be able to see areas that you missed with the bleach so you can go back over them again and you want to do all of your butterflies that way makes a huge difference when you're bleaching with white embossing powder instead of black embossing powder on that mid-tone cardstock. It's just a completely different look and it's so vibrant and so interesting. And again, try a lot of different color cardstocks. Try a navy, try a dark chocolate, Try some of those darker, deeper tones and see what color they bleach up because you might be surprised. It might not be what you expected. Okay, and you can see some of this is starting to come up, but I'm going to bleach it. I'm going to heat it again a little bit. And it's coming up almost a, almost a tan on some of them. So pretty. See that? Makes them look more unique, each one being a little bit different. We'll finish these up. You can get into those smaller areas. What's kind of nice too about bleaching over the embossing powder is the embossing powder is a little bit raised, so when that bleach gets in there, it kind of captures it a little bit and doesn't let it run too much outside of the edges unless you oversaturate it. And you do have to emboss. You can't do this over regular dye ink 
because the dye ink will just bleach right away and you'll have no image left on your paper. So here's the last of it coming up. And it's funny, some of these little spots in here are coming up a chocolate brown and others are coming up a really pale tan. So throughout the one piece of cardstock, you're going to kind of get a multicolored look. So you can see how pretty that is. Really different. So that is highlighting. That is bringing that color up inside that embossed image. Now I'm going to show you a little bit of low lighting. And for those of you who don't like to work with bleach, this is a really fun switch, kind of a twist on this same technique. So let me put this little piece aside here. And we're going to do the same thing with this one. We're going to start by taking that embossing magic pad. And then we're going to stamp those butterflies all over this piece and I'll do one butterfly here to show you what it looks like and then I'll show you my finished card projects for these two techniques and you'll be able to see how pretty they look. So we'll take that same embossing powder and emboss this butterfly. Get rid of that excess powder. And I'm going to hit this with my Marvy heat gun. You can see that come up. Blue raspberry is a really pretty color to emboss with white because it is kind of a mid-tone color, but it's still deep enough that the white really stands out so pretty on it. This is a piece of Moonlit Fog cardstock that I'm working on, and look at the color that bleached up to. That's kind of fun. You'll have a lot of fun playing with all the different Gina K Designs cardstock colors. Okay, so now what I have here is this bleached, uh, this embossed butterfly, rather, not bleached. And then what I'm going to do is make sure it's dry. It's still a little bit warm. But unlike bleaching the colors up, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to take a dark marker, and this is the nautical blue, and I'm going to color over the different areas of this butterfly. Now, if you get nautical blue outside the lines, which it's just fine to do that, because I'll show you what you're going to do next. Because you have embossing powder on there and you're using a water-based marker, it's not going to stick to that embossing powder. So even though you might be going over the lines a little bit, you'll see it pool up on top when you get into those finer lines. You'll see it pool up on top of the set embossing powder. It won't stick to it. And this way you can really fill in all your little lines there and not worry about going outside the lines because you're going to be able to clean it up. Now I have a little piece of paper towel here and I'm going to take that little water spritzer and just mist over that just to dampen it a little bit. I don't want it to be sopping wet, just a little bit damp. And then I'm going to just rub that right over the butterfly and clean up all the excess ink it all come off and all that's left behind is that beautiful white embossing powder and all that deep dark vibrant ink from your marker that's all inside that detail so that would almost be an impossible thing to stamp in a two-tone color and get it so precise and what's fun about this is parts of it are raised and parts of it are flat so if you're the person you send the card to rubs their finger over it they're going to feel all that detail up against their finger as well. Now let me show you my finished card projects using both of these different highlighting and low lighting techniques. My first card is this one and 
what I've done is I've used that little strip and then I used the little greeting from the same stamp set, the A Wish For You mini stamp set, and I just made a little strip. I embossed it with a Cuddlebug folder for a little bit of texture behind it, and then I used the greeting and cut that out with a classic Nestabilities, a Spellbinders Nestabilities oval and scalloped oval and used some quarter inch pop dots to pop that up and then I just tied two pieces of ribbon in a knot together and trimmed the ends off and just kind of straightened them out so that they looked like a pretty bow and adhered that onto my card with a glue dot. So that's one look and with that same exact stamp set and same exact stamps here is the low light look where I used one of the pattern papers from the Summer Brights pattern paper pack. This comes in your kit. And then I low lighted all those beautiful butterflies and took the same greeting and cut it out with one of the Grommet Tags Spellbinders dies. And then put a little bit of this black and white gingham that's also in the kit over that little free edge there of this panel to kind of divide the greeting and the focal image. So two very different looks from the same two stamps and a very similar technique, one highlighting and one low lighting. Whether you're embossing on mid-toned or dark-toned cardstock, try mixing bleach and markers together for a multicolored image. The more colors you add, the more exciting looks you will achieve.